<laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Storytime with Chocolate Chocolate Button. I hope you enjoyed the sunshine this weekend. It was glorious, wasn't it? My goodness me. Today we have a story about a very forgetful cat called Mog. Now let's get started. Oh, here's the cat. <laughs> Mog. 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 The Forget, forget, oh, forgetful cat, cat, Mog the Forgetful Cat by Judith Kerr. Judith Kerr is the same lady who wrote The Tiger Who Came for Tea. And it's published by, oh, you can't see, it's just a picture. Let's see what if it says on the inside. Mog the Forgetful Cat. <laughs> There's the cat. Mog the Forgetful Cat, written and illustrated, which means she drew the pictures as well, by Judith Kerr. Um, it's published by HarperCollins Children's Books. There we go. So thank you to all of those people for letting us read their book. There we go. Look, she's opening the cat flap for the cat. That's funny, don't you? You have to open the cat flap for the cat, don't you? I wonder if you've got a cat at home. For our own Mog. <laughs> So here we are, that's that girl's called Debbie, like Darasini's sister, Mr. Thomas, Mrs. Thomas, and he is called, let's see if I can stop the sunshine, Mickey. All right, let's start our story. And that's of course Mog, isn't it? Once there was a cat called Mog. She lived with a family called Thomas. Mog was nice, but not very clever. She didn't understand a lot of things. A lot of other things she forgot. She was a very forgetful cat. Oh dear, I wonder what things you might forget. Sometimes she ate her supper, then forgot she had eaten it. Sometimes she thought of something in the middle of washing her leg, then she forgot to wash the rest of it. Once she forgot that cats can't fly. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, well, look. Can you spot what bird that is? Oh, let me have a closer look. Um... Well, it's got a yellow tummy and a blue back, so it looks like it's probably a blue tit or a coal tit. Um, I mean, a blue tit or a great tit. Yes, I think you're right. Shall we check the bottom? 
But most of all, she forgot her cat flap. The cat flap led from the kitchen into the garden. Mog could go out dun, dun, dun. and in again. It was her own little door. Look, there she is, going in again. Oh, look. She's enjoying being outside in the garden. Look, oh, lucky them. They've got a lovely big garden, haven't they? The garden always made Mog very excited. She smelled all of the smells. She chased the birds. She climbed the trees. She ran round and round with a big fluffed up tail. And then she forgot the cat flap. She forgot that she had a cat flap. She wanted to go back into the house, but she couldn't remember how. Oh my goodness. Poor old Mog. In the end, she sat outside the kitchen window and meowed until someone let her in. Oh look, she's looking very sad, isn't she? Please let me in. Afterwards, you could always tell where she had sat. This made Mr Thomas very sad. He said, bother that cat. But Debbie said, she's nice. Oh, I see, look. Can you see, Lucy? Look, she's broken the flowers in the window box where she's been sitting. Oh, yes, I can see that. And that's, that's probably why he's feeling sad, isn't it? Mm. Oh, dear. Once, Mog had a very bad day. Even the start of the day was bad. Mog was still asleep. Then Nicky picked her up. He hugged her and said, Nice kitty. Mog said nothing, but she was not happy. Oh, you can see she's not happy in the picture. That's not a very nice way to get woken up, being picked up. Then it was breakfast time. Mog forgot that cats have milk for breakfast. She forgot that cats only have eggs as a treat. She ate an egg for her breakfast. Mrs Thomas said, bother that cat. And Deb Debbie said, Nicky doesn't like eggs anyway. Oh my goodness, no, look. Oh my goodness. Mog looked through her cat flap. It was raining in the garden. Mog thought, perhaps the sun is shining in the street. When the milkman came, at, she ran out. The milkman shut the door. The sun was not shining in the street after all. It was raining. A big dog came down the street. <gasps> Mog ran. The dog ran too. Uh-oh. Look, there's the milkman's cart. I don't know if many of you will have a milk person these days. We used to have, when I was little, we used to have milk delivered to our door in those bottles. And then when we'd finished our milk, we'd put the empty bottles out and they would be reused. The milkman would collect them and then put milk back in them. It was a good system, really. Mog ran right round the house and the dog ran after her. She climbed over the fence. She ran through the garden and jumped up outside the kitchen window. She meowed a big meow, very sudden and very loud. Meow! Mrs Thomas said, bother that cat. Debbie said, it wasn't her fault. Oh, look what happened when she meowed. She made her jump look. Mog made Mrs Thomas jump and then she's dropped 
all of those peas. <laughs> She's peed all over the floor. <laughs> chocolate, chocolate button. <laughs> it's a very silly joke. Oh dear, poor Mog must be in trouble. Mog was very sleepy. She found a nice, warm, soft place and went to sleep. She had a lovely dream. Mog dreamed that she had wings. She could fly everywhere. She could fly faster than the birds, even quite big birds. <gasps> Suddenly she woke up. Oh my goodness, look at all these amazing birds. Look, we've got a robin redbreast, an owl. I'm not quite sure which type of owl. It doesn't look like a barn owl, probably a tawny owl, I'd have thought. Um, a red tummy, but black wings would be a bullfinch. I'm not sure about the green one. Maybe it's a greenfinch, actually. Uh, in fact, I'm not sure about those two, although the shape of those wings are like a swallow, so maybe that's a swallow or a house martin. They often look similar in this way. Wow, beautiful. Mrs. Thomas said, bother that cat. Debbie said, I think you look nicer without a hat. Debbie gave Mog her supper and Mog ate it all up. Then Debbie and Nikki went to bed. Oh look, she must have been sitting on the hat, do you think? Hmm. Mog had a rest too, but Mr. Thomas wanted to see the fight. Mr. Thomas said, bother that cat. Why can't he? Oh, I see. Look, she, he's trying to watch the t television, the, the fight on the television. But then the Mog's tail is right dangling down in front of the screen so she can't see her. Oh, dear. Mog thought, nobody likes me. Then she thought, oh, Debbie likes me. And Debbie's door was open. Debbie's bed was warm. Debbie's hair was soft like kitten fur. Mog forgot that Debbie was not a kitten. Oh dear, look, she's licking her hair while she's asleep. Uh-oh. Debbie had a dream. It was a bad dream. It was a dream about a tiger. The tiger wanted to eat Debbie. It was licking her hair. Oh my goodness, what a horrible dream. Not like a tiger who comes to tea. That would be a lovely dream to have. Oh look, there's a parrot. Like a macaw. Oh no, the monkey. Debbie shouted. Mog jumped. Mr and Mrs Thomas said, Bother, bother, bother that cat. Debbie said nothing. She was still crying because of her bad dream. Oh dear. Poor Mog. She didn't mean Debbie to have a bad dream, did she? Mog ran out of the room and right through the house and out of her cat flat. She was very sad. The garden was dark. The house was dark too. Mog sat in the dark and thought dark thoughts. She thought, nobody likes me. They've all gone to bed. There's no one to let me in. And they haven't given me my supper. <laughs> That's silly because... She has had her supper and she can get back in because she can use the cat flap, but she's forgotten. Oh dear, poor Mog. She is a very forgetful cat, isn't she? Oh my goodness me. Then she noticed something. The house was not quite dark. There was a little light moving about. 
She looked through the window and saw a man in the kitchen. Mog thought, perhaps that man will let me in. Perhaps he will give me my supper. Uh-oh. He doesn't look like the sort of man you want in your house at night time with a torch, does he? No. She meowed her biggest meow. Very sudden and very, very loud. Should we do it together? Ready? One, two, three. Meow! The man was surprised. He dropped his bag, it made a big noise and everyone in the house woke up. Mr Thomas ran down to the kitchen and shouted, A burglar! The burglar said, Bother that cat! Mrs Thomas telephoned the police. Debbie let Mog in and Nicky hugged her. Oh my goodness me! I guess all of those things would make a big loud noise when they fell to the floor, wouldn't they? Clinkum, clinkum. Big, loud clanking noise. Maybe stolen some spoons and some jars and a teapot. A policeman came and told him, and they told him what had happened. The policeman looked at Mog. He said, What a remarkable cat. I've seen watch dogs before. But never a watch cat. <laughs> a watchdog. And now it's a, she's a watch cat, I see. She will get a medal, Debbie said. I think she'd rather have an egg. <laughs> there we go. Oh, look, the burglar's got a nice cup of tea as well. That's nice. That's good. But they're all friends again now. There's the policeman. Some of you might like to be a policeman when you're older. Policewoman or policeman. Oh, look. That medal says, To Mog for Bravery. Wow. That is so cool. Mog had a medal. She also had an egg. Every day for breakfast, Mr and Mrs Thomas told all of their friends about her. They said, Mog is really remarkable. And they never, well, almost never, said, bother that cat. <laughs> oh, that's so good. The end. Oh, look, this is a bit of information about... Judith Kerr, the author. It says, Judith Kerr is the best-selling author and illustrator of the Mog series and The Tiger Who Came to Tea. She has also written three novels about her childhood, including When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit. Her books for children have sold over five million copies and have become classics. My goodness me, that is a lot of books to sell. So thank you very much to Mog, the forgetful cat, to Judith Kerr for writing it and drawing all of the pictures, illustrating it. And thank you to HarperCollins Children's Press for letting us read it today while we can't see each other in person. And I wonder what you would like to do as your reading journal activity. I was thinking it might be fun because there were quite a few dreams in this story. It might be fun to imagine what you would do if you could fly just like um, Mog does in the story. Imagine if you had wings and you could fly, what would you do? You could write a whole story about it. Imagine if you had wings. So if you had wings for a day, what would you do with your wings? Where would you go? What would you see? Why would you go there? Okay, fantastic. I can't wait to read your stories and I can't wait to see you again tomorrow for another story time with Chocolate Chocolate Button. Okay, bye for now, bye.